Hello, good evening, and welcome to Coldwater High School, where tonight on WOSN will bring you a Midwest Athletic Conference matchup between the visiting Marion local Flyers and the homestanding Coldwater Cavaliers. I'm Garrett Seawright, joined alongside Danny Holbrook, and we'll bring you all the action tonight here from the Palace. And Danny, first place on the Mac, in the Mac, on the line here tonight. We've got two very good basketball teams coming in tonight. Absolutely. Look at Marion local. Garrett, they've won 12 of their last 14 games. They're a traditional state power. Everything going their way right now, undefeated in the MAC. You can take a look at Coldwater on a different trajectory a little bit. They've lost four of their last six after winning four in a row, so kind of an up and down season, but the bottom line is they're still undefeated in the MAC. That they are, so we'll take a look here at the starting lineups for both squads. First for the visiting Flyers, 14 and 3, 6 and 0 oh in the Midwest Athletic Conference. Their head coach is Kurt Guttemuller. Jaden Messers, a 6 2 senior, wears number 11, 13 points tonight. Tate Hassel run the point, the 6 2 senior. Where's number 12? Brandon Ike averages three points and three rebounds a contest. The 6'1 senior wears number 15. And then the big guys, Austin Niekamp is a six foot eight sophomore. Seven points, six points, six rebounds a contest for number 23. And Jack Kanapke will anchor things down low. The six foot nine sophomore wears number 33, 14 points and eight and a half rebounds a contest. Starters for Flyers, Mesher, Hess, Ike, Niekamp, and Kanapke. For Coldwater, nine and eight. Tied for second place in the Midwest Athletic Conference at five and one. Their head coach, Nick Fisher, and their starting five sounds like this. Marcel Blossing game is a six foot senior guard. Wears number 11, six points a contest. Evan Harlemer is a six foot two senior. Wears number 22, just under nine points per game. Number 23 is Justin Kalp, a six foot one senior forward. He wears number 23, four point, five points and five rebounds tonight. Brady Layfeld, number 24, the sophomore, six points and three rebounds. And Luke Schwederman, the leading scorer for the Cavaliers inside the center circle right now, wearing number 42. Luke, 10 points, eight rebounds a contest for the six foot seven junior. So Kanapke, Schwederman in the center circle. The tip is won by the Flyers, and they'll begin first with the basketball. It's going to be really important for Marion Local to establish that outside presence. Everybody knows they run things through knee camp and Kanapke. If they start knocking down outside perimeter shots or getting to the rim and getting to the foul line, it's going to be a long night for Coldwater. Jaden Mesher, excuse me, Tate S has it. There's Mesher. Missed a couple of games with a broken nose, and you see he's got the face mask on tonight. He'll get the cross-court pass, rises and fires for three, and splashes at home to begin the contest. And that's what Jaden Mesher does. He was out for a game or two, and he comes back, and he gets six threes on the game. He comes back. He's really good from the outside. Three on away from Justin Kalp. Can't answer. Rebound, no offensive rebound for Hardimer. It's up and good. Hey, second, second chance shots are going to be huge for Coldwater tonight. If they can get multiple possessions, they got a chance in this ball game. Kanapke down low, takes the lob. In a short corner near side. Double teamed, floats off the window, can't hit, but he gets his own offensive rebound. Backdoor pass to Nick Camp off the glass. Did you see what Justin Cowell did? He did a great job of forcing Kanapke to go out of the paint, almost to the foul line, and he's going to have to do that all night, and he's going to have to bustle up and push back. Cavaliers with the basketball. It's Brady Leifeld. Gets in the near corner to Schwederman. Holds it above his head to the top of the key to Kaup. Falls on the floor, scooped up. Hess looking to go coast to coast in the lane. Hangs, hits. Maybe a little dipsy do there and a little turnaround jumper. He uses the backboard. Nice job by Hess. 7 2 the score on the ultimate outdoor scoreboard. Approaching two minutes gone here in his first quarter. He's Harlemer. Takes the basketball at the high left point. Throws left. Kalp in the far corner. Guarded by Kanapke. Ball on the left wing now for Marcel Blasingain. To the right. Kalp thought about the three. Steps inside the lane. Stripped. Still loose. It's bounced out of bounds by Brandon Eink. Well, you know, we talked to the coaches before the game, and the cold water bench said that they need to handle defensive pressure and right now you see Marion Local's got a steal and the pressure right there so they're really going to have to key on handling that defensive pressure for Marion Local because they can get after it. Cavaliers just left of the center circle as Blonzing game fakes the handoff to Harlemer and now will give. Kevin Harlemer picks up the dribble to Schwederman straight away. Throws right. Cal back to Schwederman. Again leading scorer for the Cavaliers. Looking to break down knee camp. Will rise and fire for three. Left it just short. Kanapke grabs the window. 
If he can knock that jumper down with consistency, that's going to take one of the bigs from Marion Local out of the middle. Oh, that's big right there. Neat camp for three from the near corner. Give him five first quarter points, and it's a 10-2 advantage for the Flyers. So you really got to get out on the perimeter. When I talk about closing out on the shooters, if you don't do that, they're going to knock those down all night. They're that good of shooters. And there's that defensive pressure again, Garrett. Entry pass. Ball picked from behind, though, by Harlemer. It was stolen away, and they trade turnovers. Harlemer in transition. Excuse me, Blonson game in transition. You got to get points in transition if you're Coldwater. You got to make those bigs run the entire length of the floor. Make them play defense. Knee camp. Heat check three. Left that one off the front iron. Rebound pulled down by Brady Layfield. Cavaliers thought about running for just a moment. Instead, will slow things down as Harlemer ends it on the right wing. Gives straight away to Blonson game. He'll try to break down a defender. Left elbow instead kicks in the far corner. He'll get it right back. Approaching 4.30 to go in his first quarter on the ultimate outdoor scoreboard. Layfeld. Tightly guarded by Brandon Ike. Tries to step back. Instead will throw right to Schwederman. Working against Kneekamp into the near corner. Cow. Long possession for the Cavaliers. There's a lot of security if you're a Marion local perimeter guard and knowing that you've got those bigs behind yeah. you. <laughs> you know, a step away from you, and you know that there's a 6'8", 6'9", post player defending the rim, and that, that's a huge luxury Marion local has. Ball goes out of bounds. They'll say it's a jump ball and a possession arrow favors Coldwater as Marion local will make their first changes of the evening. Mitchell Ramley in the ball game for the first time. Ramley can knock down threes. He's a really good spot-up shooter. Also, Luke Pullman checks in for the Flyers. We had Marion Local last weekend, and Luke Pullman was not. He had three threes in the first half, and he was really good at shooting the outside shot. Contested three on the way, altered from Evan Harlemer. Lands well short of the rim. Halfway gone in his first quarter. Flyer basketball leading by six, 10 to four. Knee camp off the screen at the top of the key. Turn around right hand hook shot, left it just short off the front of the rim. Schwederman wipes the glass for cold water. I'd like to see Neekamp when he gets that ball to the high post go a little high low and look for Kanapke on the opposite wing or on the opposite side. Those are two big bodies down there. Three on away from Brady Layfeld. No. And a rebound for Neekamp. Cavaliers a little cold to start tonight. Marion Locals had a couple <laughs> open shots here. As Pullman bounces to Kanapke, double teamed, kicks back out of it to Pullman, cross court pass. Ranley for three, yes sir. And there's Mitchell Ranley there, when you, when you got double teams like that, you gotta be able to hit those shots, and so far so good for Marion Local. Early timeout by the Cavaliers, 3.06 to go in the first. Marion Local with a nine point lead here on WLSN. Scoreboard tonight presented by Ultimate Outdoor, the Ohio distributor of the Structure X, or Structure Pergola X, excuse me. Ultimate Outdoor, a division of Alts, seamless spouting. 13 to 4 on the Ultimate Outdoor scoreboard, where uh, Flyers have been hot to start this first quarter, Danny. Yeah, I got to believe that Coach Fisher, when he called that timeout, told his guys, look, we're going to double team the post, but you still got to close out on the perimeter, and they're not doing a very good job of doing that right now. Justin Kalp in the high post, trying to work the lane. Hangs, can't hit. Rebound pulled down by Ramley. And the Flyers will push the tempo just a bit. Pullman near corner three off the back iron. Offensive rebound by Ike. Right back to Pullman. Oh, let it fly once more. No. Kanapke an offensive board. His stick back muscled up his first bucket of the night. Now he gets after it. I'm telling you, Jack Kanapke's a strong kid. And he plays hard. He's really, really good. Schwederman reverses from the deep post instead. Back out to Layfeld. He throws right to Curtis Dewar in the ball game. And maybe I shouldn't have said it like that. He plays hard all the time, <laughs> but he plays extremely hard. He's really good. Mason Welsh comes into ball game. Justin Kalp will take a seat on the bench for the Cavaliers. 15-4, 2-17 to go here in this first quarter. Tate Hess back in the game from Marion Local. And Austin Meekamp subs back in as well for the blue and gold. There, there is a huge crowd here tonight. This is a lot of people. Got a lot of <laughs> folks inside the Ballas. His first place in the Midwest Athletic Conference on the line. Cavaliers inbound. Curtis Dewar took the inbounds. Instead, Balaam Brock Blockberger to the window. No, Schwederman grabs the offensive rebound in a tough spot. 
Tries to muscle up a left-hand shot, can't. Knee camp, the rebound. There you see the advantages of having two kids of that size. Well, well, of course, Kanapke's on the bench, but Austin Ekamp does a great job on the weak side rebound and going up and snagging it. Pullman runner, yes. Well, what I say earlier, if those guards start getting to the rim and they start knocking down shots, it's going to be a long night. Coldwater's got to find some answers, stop that penetration, and close out on the perimeter. It's a 17-4 lead for the Flyers. Cavaliers haven't scored in a long time, as they won't do it this time either. Stripped. Flyers in transition. Shot put up by Ranley. Fouled. The first foul called against either squad tonight with 90 seconds, just a little over. 90 seconds to go in this first quarter. And now there you see that defensive pressure, and Ranley and those guards are really getting after it down on the cold water offensive end. And they're, they're just creating in transition, and they're getting to the rim really easy. And when they're not scoring, they're going to the line with the clock stop. Ranley hits the first Wright State Lake Campus University, Wright State University Lake Campus free throw. He's got four first quarter points. Makes it 18 to four. Second free throw attempt from the six foot junior all the way and good. Give him five. 15 point advantage now for the Flyers. Coldwater in the lane. Cal got deep, couldn't get it, knee camp the rebound and he's called for the travel. I didn't think knee can't moved at all. I, the ball. Was I didn't know that he had the ball long enough to travel, but <laughs> we're, we we're, we're, we're up here. They're down there. So under 90 seconds to go in the first quarter. Cavaliers trailing by 15. Looking to take the lid off the bucket. Dewar in a short corner near side. Baseline. Fouled. And that is the first foul committed by the Flyers. Goes against Mitchell Ramley. So Coldwater will trigger it in from just right of their own bucket. As Jack Knappy comes back in. And now Coldwater will send Justin Count back in as well, the six foot one senior. Still trying to figure out who he's going in yeah, for. He wasn't, that wasn't real clear, was he? And Blade Busher will take a seat back on the bench for the Cavaliers. So Brady Lanefeld gets it in, gets it right back in the post, hangs, blocked from behind by Niekamp, out of play, stays with Coldwater. Niekamp did a great job of coming from the perimeter all the way down to the post. He saw that he got beat on the back side. He does a nice job and really makes up for it. Timed <laughs> perfectly by Niekamp. Yeah. Cavaliers lob into the backcourt. That's Justin Counter, excuse me, Mason Welsh goes and grabs it. This is Blockberger at the free throw line. Throws back to the high left point. One minute remaining in this first quarter on the Ultimate Outdoor Ohio scoreboard. Lob back to Layfeld. Gives to Welsh. Works to the left elbow into the far corner. Count thought about the three. Layfeld jabs, still holds a 45. Back to Welsh at the high right point, just inside the three point line. Cavaliers content to watch that clock tick, trailing by 15 here in his first quarter. Blockberger rises, fires from the free throw line. No. Rebound to Kneecamp. And the Flyers have 25 seconds to work with. It was a long uh, offensive set, but uh, credit Marion Local. <laughs> they didn't allow Coldwater to get anywhere inside that paint, and they had to settle for a long jump shot, and that's what they've been doing this entire quarter. Tate Hess between the circles, throws right. 10 seconds on the clock. Nearly stolen away is Welsh tracks it down, has to throw it back into play. Perfectly to Kalp, fouled, and he'll shoot two Wright State University late campus free throws. Now they're going to go to the line, finally get some points on the board here with four seconds to go, and it's been a tough first quarter for the Cavaliers. They just haven't been able to make much more than the offensive end. Second foul coming in by the Flyers, first by Luke Pullman. Has Kalp, the 66% free throw shooter at the line, hits the first. His first basket of the evening. Makes it 19-5 on the ultimate outdoor scoreboard. Second free throw attempt from the 6-1 senior. Too strong on that one. Hess corrals the basketball, races up the floor. Three at the horn, good if it goes. Doesn't. And that will do it for the first quarter of play. 19-5, an explosive first quarter for the Marion local Flyers. We'll step aside, come back with second quarter action here on WOSN.
Second quarter now underway as the Marion local Flyers have a 14-point advantage on the Ultimate Outdoor scoreboard. I'm Garrett Seawright alongside Danny Holbrook for Supremacy in the Midwest Athletic Conference on the line tonight. Tate Hess on the right wing, gets to Kanapke. Pass between the circles, gets a screen from Kanapke. Into the near corner, Mesher for a three. Hits the guide wire, dropped in. Doesn't count because that's out of play. Yeah, if we, if we look at the first quarter and we go strictly by the numbers, and you look at Coldwater, they only average 47.8 a game, so they're not a high-flying offense. And then you've got Marion Local, who defensively only give up 40 a game, and it was the perfect everything for Marion Local. They limited the number of shots Coldwater got, they kept them out of the paint, they pressured them defensively, and on the offensive end, Marion Local was getting good looks, they were knocking shots down, so the perfect storm for Marion Local. Great drive to the basket, up and good for Blasen game. He's got four of Coldwater seven points. And that's what they need to do. Take it one possession at a time. Get a stop down here on defense. Go down and get a good shot just like that one. Knee camp posted up. Ike was tightly guarded. Mesher to Hess. Drives near side. Throws it off the window. No. Ball ping pongs around. Goes out of play. Great athleticism there by Balaam <laughs> Blockberger to get up and over that chair. Oh, uh, Blaylon was uh, uh, he jumped that chair like it was nothing. Yeah, he's, a, he's in a tough spot there if he's if he gets a toe catching the top of that chair. Got up and over it. Flyers retain possession as knee camp has it between the circles. Throws left to Hess. Ike trying to get it to Kanapke. Being face guarded. Gets back to Hess. Ike on the right wing. Looking to lob to Kanapke. Does. Double teamed. Kneecamp on the back door. Now Kanapke one-on-one -on -one in the lane. Blocked right back to him by Luke Schwederman with authority. Nice job by Schwederman and also a great job by Austin Kneecamp. Recognizing the double team on Kanapke comes down on the back side, so they had to respect that. But a really nice job by Coldwater there in defending that play. Schwederman count straight away for three. Yes! So there you go, Garrett. Back-to-back -back possessions where they stop Mary Loka for scoring, and they get five on the board, so that's exactly what they need. Lead down, down to nine as we approach Six minutes to go in his first half. Flyers looking to advance it. Hess throws right to Ike. Near corner. Mesher bounces to Kanapke. Token double team. Reverses to the top of the key. Ike drives straight down Main Street and drops it home. Great job by Brandon Ike to recognize the double team on the low post. He just splits the middle and gets the ball an easy layup. 21-10 to score on the ultimate outdoor scoreboard. Flyers with the advantage. Cavalier basketball as Schwederman. Gives to Evan Harlemer on the right wing. Tries to get to the free throw line. Back to the basket. Gives to Blossom game. Pump fake by Kalp. Schwederman working against Niekamp. Will throw back to Harlemer. 5.15 to go in the half. Harlemer steps back. Kalp takes a step back three. Left it a little flat. Long rebound comes out to Kanapke. And Harlemer's going to have to knock that mid-range jumper down. The reason I say that is he's being guarded by Jack Kanapke. You've got to be able to pull him away from the basket. And right now, Kanapke's staying in the middle of the lane and letting him shoot that shot. Knee camp contested three. Yes. And that's why Schwederman's out on the perimeter, because Knee camp can knock those shots down. Second three by the 6'8 sophomore. Lead back out to 14. Count. Looking to get to the window against Kanapke. Does. Schwederman in the offensive board. High off the glass. Tangled up. Jump ball points towards Coldwater. I know the crowd wanted a foul there, Garrett, but Schwederman's left-handed. He went with the ball in the left hand, so he was away from Kanapke, and there was no foul needed right there. So 4.30 to go here in the second quarter. Kanapke will take a seat on the bench. So the Flyers change things up just a hair. Randley back in the game, as is Pullman. Cavaliers lob to Schwederman at the high right point with 4.30. Near corner, closing game. Uses the screen from Schwederman, he'll roll to the bucket. Dribbled it off the top of his foot, picked up by Harlemert in the near corner. Having Harlemert to 6-2 senior, gets it down low. Up, no from Leifeld and a rebound goes to Pullman. Every shot's contested in the paint by Marion Local. They do a great job of recognizing ball side and they get there and they contest every shot. Austin Niekamp 
in the lane, leans, hits. See what he did there. He put Schmiederman on his opposite side and just turned and did a nice little, little move there where he gets to the basket. That was a really nice post play. Ten first quarter, first half points, I should say, for Austin Niekamp. Makes it 26-10. It's the largest lead of the evening for Marion Local. Three on the way from Harlem. It's good. <laughs> nice job by Harlem. Stepping out there and knocking that shot down. He got his feet squared. He got his shoulders squared. Nice job. Flyers doubling up cold water, 26-13 as Pullman adds it in the near corner. Tries to lob down low to Niekamp, underneath the bucket, rejected once more by Schwederman. Yeah, Niekamp got a little too far underneath the basket. Nice job by Schwederman, that's his second rejection of the night. Harlemer, leans off the window. They need to string some more of those together, so they need to get some defensive stops and then get easy buckets like that. Again, lead down to 11 as the cold water Cavaliers trim it up. Three minutes to go here in this first half, 26-15. Flyers the lead. Can't hit Ink. Knee can't hits the deck hard. He'll be all right. Scooped up. Great sportsmanship there from Evan Harlow to help him up. That is Brady Layfeld's first foul committed. Second by Coldwater. Don't want to see uh, Austin Knee can't hit the floor like that. He's a valuable member of this team. He goes down, everybody kind of held the breath a little bit, but he did jump right back up. First Wright State, Lake, Wright State University Lake Campus free throw for Knee Camp is up and good. He's got 11 points. Whether you're interested in an associate's or bachelor's degree, Wright State University Lake Campus offers something for you. Visit lake.wright.edu to apply today. Jaden Mesher comes out of the ball game as Jack Kanapke stands at the scores table, ready to check in for Knee Camp should he hit the free throw. Does. 12 first half points for Niekamp. Grows the lead back out to 13. I still wonder how many guys intentionally missed that shot. I was sitting here thinking, you yeah. know, like you get, a, you get a little bit more run here in this first half. You <laughs> clank out one off a of back iron. <laughs> I'm sure they don't think that. It's probably right. why they're 14 and 3. And, <laughs> and we're not. Right, why things are going well for the Flyers. <laughs> Team oriented, right? <laughs> I'm guessing there's a limit of how many times you can do that before yeah. somebody has a conversation with you. Ball's loose on the floor. Still loose, scooped up by Miles. Pot cutter in a game for Coldwater for the first time. 2.20 to go. Harlemert, left hand floater. No. Ball loose in the lane. On the jump ball, this time points towards Marion Local. I can't tell you how important Tate Hess is to this team on the defensive end. He is such a luxury. He's going to guard their best guard, and he's going to be a force on the defensive end. He's really athletic, and he, he just gives everything up on the defensive end. He, 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 you know, he, he, he doesn't want to score a whole lot of points, or maybe he does, but, man, he really plays hard on the defensive end. Randley lobs down low to Kanapke. Lays it off, easy bucket for the 6'9", Junior. And that was because of positioning. He just got far enough down there that there was nothing they could do about that. Pullman will drop Layfeld to the deck. Second foul committed by Pullman. And Nick Fisher, the Coldwater coach, told us before the game that we got to handle the post. And for the most part, I think they've done that. Um, you know, Austin Niekamp's got 12 points, two from the free throw line, a couple of threes. Jack and Apke's only got four points, and yet they're still trailing by 15. Well, and part of that, too, is the fact that Marion Local's knocking everything down from the perimeter. I mean, you can guard the post all you want, but if you don't close out and take away those easy looks, then they're, they're going to knock them down. Three-pointer from Evan Harlemer off the mark. And Randle nice. goes to the bucket on the crossover, can't hit. And Harlemer will wipe the glass for cold water. Under two minutes to go here in this first half. 30-15 on the ultimate outdoor scoreboard. If you're cold water, you want to close this gap to 10 by the half, give yourself a chance in the second half. Long three on the way from Layfeld. No, but the offensive rebound of the Cavaliers. Get a timeout called by Nick Fisher, the cold water coach. We'll take it with him. 123 to go in the first half. 30-15 Flyers lead on WOSN. throws tonight sponsored by Wright State University Lake Campus. Whether you're interested in an associate's or bachelor's degree, Wright State University Lake Campus offers something for you. Visit lake.wright.edu to apply today. 30-15 the score. Flyers with the lead. Cold water basketball under 90 seconds to go here in the second quarter. The inbound to Harlem in the far corner. He'll give it right back to Marcel Blasigny. Bounces. 
Near corner, Miles Potcutter. Top of the key. Goes through the hands of Blockburger. And that's a turnover by the Cavaliers. You always watch the team coming out of a timeout. You know that they've got a set play they want to run. And when things like that happen, it just really, you know, it just tears your spirits up when you throw the ball out of bounds on an unforced error. Unforced excuse me. So 60 seconds to go in this first half. Tate Hess between the circles. Gives to Ecamp. Contested three off the side iron. Thrown back into play by Ike. Goes into the hands of Blockburger, and he'll race across the timeline. Cal between the circles with 50. Thought about the three. Instead, gives to Potcutter. Throws left. Long three on the way off the heel. No from Harlemert. Yeah, yes. they're going to get Schwederman on that one. Yes. Hess knocked to the floor. First foul committed by Schwederman. Just three fouls aside here in this first half. It's been a pretty clean game. So 30-15, 38.8 remaining in the first half. And if you're married local, if I'm coaching, I'm taking my time. I'm up 15 with 30 seconds to go. I'm going to make sure I get the last shot. Now, that may not be their theory. They're going to get pressured out top, but I sure <laughs> that's how I think I'd do. Pass is in a tough spot. Has to get rid of it with a five-second count. Mesher for three. Yes. Or do that. <laughs> that works as well. Lead to 18, 20 seconds and a half. Jump stop by, or excuse me, Blazing game. Three on the way from Blockburger. No, got his own offensive rebound. Schwederman off the window for his first basket. And they needed that in the worst way. Flyers with four. Hess, Pullman at the horn. Good if it goes. It doesn't. And we've played one half of basketball. 33-17 on the ultimate outdoor scoreboard. Flyers with a 16-point advantage at the halftime break. We'll step aside, come back with third quarter action between the 14 and three Marion local Flyers and the nine and eight Coldwater Cavaliers here on WOSN. Third quarter underway, 33-17 the score. Flyers with the lead. Cavalier basketball is Luke Schwederman. At the top of the key, thought about the three, tries to get it down low, poked from behind by Jack Kanapke, stolen away by Marion Local. Yeah, Coldwater's going to have to start on the defensive end, and they're going to have to really push those post players out. And the first rule of post pro, or post play is you've got to get pressure on the perimeter and on the ball carrier, uh, ball carrier, excuse me, the ball handler. You've got to get out on that perimeter, and you've got to keep that ball from coming into the post. And so far, man, Local's been able to do what they want to do. Tonight. What about six and a half minutes there in the first half without a foul? Brady Layfield picks up his first 30 seconds, or second, excuse me, 30 seconds into the third quarter as the Flyers inbound right to Brandon Ike. He's got it up and good. He's got four points tonight. That was a nice set play right there. They got the screen up top, and Hess just runs in the bucket and nails it. Cavaliers. Blazing game, kicks back into the far corner to Kalp. We'll walk to the top of the key, hand off to Harlemer. Surveys, gets to Blazing game, floats it high above Jack Kanapke. Altered, stripped as Kalp grabbed the loose basketball. It'll stay with the Flyers. And right there, you see Marcel Blazing game. He's got an open lane, and what happens, Kanapke closes it off, and because of his size, Blazing game falling away from the basket when he should have been going straight up to the rim, looking at the net. Bounce to Blazing Game at the top of the key. He'll rise and fire for three off the heel. Rebound, Kanapke. Finally gets rid of it to Tate Hess. Won't be pressured as he brings the ball off the floor on the near sideline. Angles to the middle of the floor. Throws right. Knee camp. Down low. Kanapke muscles one off the window. No, poked it back out. Unfortunately, got a little too much mustard on it. Sends it out of play. Kanapke felt like he should have got fouled there, and I'm not real sure he shouldn't have. He had a clear lane to the basket. And he didn't miss the shot because he wasn't close enough. He was right underneath the basket. 35-17. Six and a half to go here in his third quarter. Cavaliers trying to regroup after hitting the halftime break. Struggling offensively there in the first half. Lozen game bounces. Kicks back out to Cal. Pumps on the three. Drives past Kanaki. Schwederman to the window. Can't get the old-fashioned three-point play. But he will shoot two Wright State University Lake Campus free throws. Well, good job by Schwederman there. Get the ball down in the post and go up. And at least, you know, give, your or give yourself a chance to make the bucket. And get down on the post like that. And now you go to the free throw line with the clock stop to help your team. 
Josh Wiedemann, a 61% free throw shooter. Too strong on the first, keeping at 35-17. Whether you're interested in an associate's or bachelor's degree, Wright State University Lake Campus offers something for you. Visit lake.wright.edu to apply today. Second free throw, Schwederman good. He's got three points tonight, a quiet night for the 6'7 junior. Averages 12 points and eight rebounds a contest, sitting at three points here in the early stages of the third quarter. Yeah, it's been a concerted effort by the Flyers to keep Schwederman out of there. And that's a really nice job there by Evan Harleman of getting back on defense and recognizing there was nobody down the post to defend it. So he goes to the middle of the lane and defends the ball. 35-18, trying to get a Kanapke on the back door. Jaden Mesher looking to get it in. Gets to Hess on the left wing. Throws back in the far corner to Mesher. Flyers working around the perimeter. Two Mesher coming off the screen near side. They'll try to lob down low to knee camp instead. They're working back to the high right point with Brandon Ike. Tightly guarded by Layfeld. As Mesher jumps into the far corner to knee camp. He'll hold. Good defensive possession here for Coldwater. Mesher, contested three, blocked. Hands in the hands of Layfeld. Three on two, but a bad pass stolen away by Hess. He'll hang in a lane, swatted by Schwederman. Hess thought he had an uncontested layup there, and Schwederman comes out of nowhere and knocks that back. Kalp for three. Yes! Three. Friendly roll for Justin Kalp. Give him seven points on the evening. I love what Coach Gutmiller's doing here on the offensive set. He's spreading out knee camp and Kanapke. If you're going to you're going to try to double team those two, it's not going to happen. I'm going to put them on opposite sides of the rim, and that's exactly what they're doing right now. Knee camp triple team to the lane after the offensive rebound. Or excuse me, Kanapke triple teamed. I should say he'll get it once more on a right block. Goes through to the defender, and he's called for the charge. That's just frustration there by Jack Kanapke, and, and he he got down so far and. They're really pounding on him with double and triple teams, and that's just a little frustration right there. He saw him levy the shoulder through the defender. That's Jack Kanapke's first foul picked up tonight. Cavaliers looking to chip away at this lead. First place in the MAC on the line tonight. Schwederman in the lane. Turnaround left hand hook shot, no. Scooped up by Nika. And Kanapke and, and Kalp are really battling down low. Kanapke tried to clear him out, and Kalp just kind of backed away from him. Hess hangs, left it short, lands in the hands of Ekamp. Turn around, hook shot, no. Kanapke called for his second straight foul. Uh, it looked to me like he went over top of, Je of uh, Justin Kalp, and probably the foul. And I think this is a good move by Coach Gutmuller taking him out. He's got two quick fouls, and he's getting a little aggravated, so I think that's a really good move right there. Mitchell Ranley back in the game for Marion Local. Brady Langfeld, Justin Kalp takes seats on the bench for the Cavaliers is Mason Welsh. And I love Coach Gutmuller right there. Did you see that? He's talking to his player, and he's explaining to him, you know, I'm not upset with you. I get it. You were frustrated. I love that move right there. Drive from Blasingame, stripped. And now another foul called against Marion Local. Goes against Mesher. Or no, they'll call a foul on Blasingame. Yeah, they got Marcel Blasingame on that one. Not sure what he did. Yeah, <laughs> the Coldwater faithful are kind of confused as we are. I'm not real sure where he gets that foul from. So the lead out to 14 now for Marion Local. That's Coldwater. Looks like he'll play a little zone here. Yeah, well, with Kanapke out of the game, they're going to go to that big zone. They're going to try to keep the ball in the perimeter. But they've got Schwederman out of the game also. Mesher for three. Can't hit. Knee camp. The board. Foul committed by Coldwater. Yeah, Blade Busher just pushed back on Austin Niekamp and <laughs> pushed him all the way back into the uh, out-of-bounds area. So the first foul committed by Butcher, three fouls apiece. I don't think I think we got to the final minute of the first half before each team had three fouls. Niekamp back to the basket, double teamed. Pullman thought about the three. Flyers patient offensively with that 14-point advantage. Pullman, tightly guarded by Blockburger. Gives up at the high left point to Tate Hess. 3.30 to go in the third on the ultimate outdoor scoreboard. Hess in the lane, hits. Nice job by Tate Hess to get into the rim. There you see a little bit of his athleticism. He can get to the rim when he needs to, and he's really strong and quick. 37-21, flyer lead. Cavaliers working offensively. 
Busher, left wing, gets a screen, thought about the three. Blossom game will put up the three. No, offensive rebound, though, by the Cavaliers. Put back up and good by Mason Welsh. They need more of those. That was a really nice job. But you saw there the defensive effort in Marion Local. But they thought about the three, and they kicked it out, and they got a farther shot, and it goes off the rim. Now, they did get the offensive board, but you're watching what they're doing out on the perimeter. Mesher, left wing, 6-2 senior, throws right to Pullman. Hess thought about the three. Pumped on it. Mesher will let it fly off the heel. Rebound, Blockburger. This is a huge possession for Coldwater. They can get the thing down to 11. That'd be huge for them right now. Thrown right. Harlemer holds. Far corner to Blasen game. Blockburger looking down low to Welsh. Instead throws left to Harlemer. He will fire down low. Welsh in the lane. Got it. Welsh did a great job. He had Mitchell Randley on his opposite hip, and he moved him to the opposite side, and he goes left side, scores the bucket. That was a huge possession. Two minutes to go in this third quarter. Lean down to 12, 37-25. As soon as they scored, Marion Local gets Jack Kanapke up. Randley with his heels inside the center circle. And he can't right side. Poked away, scooped up by Pullman. Timeout called by Kurt Gunnamore. Let's take a couple side as well. 144 to go in the third. 12 point lead for the Flyers here on WOSN. Our scoreboard tonight presented by Ultimate Outdoor, the Ohio distributor of the structure Pergola X. Ultimate Outdoor, a division of Alts, seamless spouting. 145 to go here in this third quarter. Cavaliers have it down to 12, Danny. Yeah, Coach Gunnerman calls a timeout. They were getting a little stale on offense, Garrett. Now, part of that is because Coldwater's really picked up the defense, and they were having trouble scoring. So he calls a timeout and says, hey, look, we're going to run this set. We're going to try to get an easy bucket. And they bring Jack Kanapke back in. Foul committed by Coldwater's Mason Welsh. That'll send Mitchell Ranley to the line. Hit two free throws earlier tonight. The six-foot junior toes the line. And he doesn't hit the first Wright State University Lake Campus free throw. Lead stays at 12, 37-25. Flyers average 51 points a night. And Randley got that one to go. He's got six points tonight. Cavaliers trying to get something going. Curtis Dewar to the free throw line. Kicks back out. Blockberger in the lane. Back to Dewar, able to keep possession. He'll drive past two flyers to the window, blocked. I like the set, I like the shot. That, there's nothing wrong with that shot going inside. It was a good shot, a good drive to the bucket. Kanapke back to the basket. Cross court pass, Ranley all day for three, and he got it. Yeah, that's, that's what they can do to you. They just knock shots down. Mitchell Randley with nine. One minute remaining in this third quarter. Lead back out to 16. Lob down a little Welsh. Tipped away by Ike. Flyers want to run. Randley. Hess. One of that three-pointer instead will hold on to it with under a minute to go in the quarter. Cavaliers continue to pressure tightly. Hess. No room to work. And a five-second violation. Five-second call. Curtis Dewar forcing the turnover there. 5'10", senior. Well, you saw Coldwater had this thing cut to 12, and you saw how quick it goes back up to 16 because of the ability to go inside out. Once that ball goes into Jack Kanapke, everybody sinks down, and if you can knock down shots, that's, that's why they can be so good, Garrett. Yeah, because you, you can't leave. There aren't many post players no. you can leave one-on-one -on -one with Jack Kanapke. No, you can't. You can't. No, oh, by the way, Austin Niekamp, the 6'8 sophomore, is on the other side of the lane, too. And so. he can hit from, you leave yeah. him open, he's going to hit from three. He can play with his back to the basket as well. Brady Layfeld in the lane, patient, foul, and he'll shoot two Wright State University Lake Campus free throws after the foul committed by Mitchell Randley. His second, 
And I feel like Coldwater, this half, they've played a little more loose, you know, offensively. They, they've attacked the basket a whole lot more, and they haven't settled for a lot of jumpers. So they're trying to get to the rim. I like what they're doing. Hey, let's get to the rim. Let's get to the foul line. And let's get the clock stopped. But unfortunately, defensively, that is a big task to stop this flyer offense. Tate Haas will sub in for Brandon Ike. First free throw made by Brady Layfeld, his first point of the evening. Sophomore average is just shy of six points per contest. And the 61% free throw shooter hit them both. Cavaliers turn on the pressure just a little bit in the backcourt as Hess drives past. 20 seconds remaining in a quarter. 14 point lead for Marion Local. Hess at the left elbow, pulls it back out with 15. Throws left. Ranley gives back to Hess with seven. Kanapke tries to get it to Mesher, lost the handle, turn around, lets it fly. Too strong, hits the top of the backboard with three seconds. Boy, that was a nice play when Mesher cut back door and he had the open layup and he just, the ball kind of got loose and went off his foot. So Coldwater going length of the floor, two and a half. Long three from Dewart. Dewart left it short and that'll do it for the third quarter. 41-27, Flyers lead after three here on WOSN. Fourth quarter about to get underway. Our scoreboard tonight presented by Ultimate Outdoor, the Ohio distributor of the structure Pergola X. Ultimate Outdoor, a division of Alts, seamless spouting. Fourth quarter now underway. Marion Local leads 41-27. As Jack Kanapke in a tough spot, fouled by Justin Kaup. His first foul committed of the year. The count just kind of got caught up there. He had Kanapke where he couldn't move the ball, and he just played straight up with your hands up, and he kind of come across the top of him. He'll lob into Kanapke. That's a great play right there. <laughs> How do you defend that, Gary? He wanted to go up and dunk it. Didn't have enough space. Didn't matter. As Luke Pullman will send the Cavalier. Brady late on the floor, so Pullman's third foul, but you're right, Danny, I don't know if there is a way to well, defend that. Yeah, Cal let him get way too far down underneath of it, and when he got on the opposite side of him, <laughs> which Kanapke wanted, you know, he made that happen, but... Miles Pot got the inbounds pass. Dewar for three. Got that one to go. <laughs> Curtis Dewar cuts the lead to 13. A little bit of life there by the Cavaliers, who got a 13. Plenty of time left in this quarter. Eink, Mesher for three. No. Welsh the board. Cavaliers with the basketball. As Danny Sant can get it down to as low as 10. Hot cutter crosses over, has to scoop it up. Dewar, heat check. Not hot. Knee camp the board. He was online, he's just not, not long enough. Not just a little short as Eink. Pass stolen away by Pot Cutter. One on three will pick it up. Minute gone here in this fourth quarter. Kalp thought about the three. Cross court pass to Pot Cutter. Goes out of bounds off him. Cavalier fade, put on like it. They thought it went off a guy wearing blue. Yeah, they're going to lose that argument. <laughs> so Marion Local inbounds. Ike. Into knee camp. Gets back. Measure. Tough spot to Hess. Crosses the timeline. Free throw line. Ike back to Hess. 6.30 to go. And a 13 point lead for the Flyers. kanaki has got Cop on him down low. And he's trying to push him in the middle of the floor. Measure in a far corner. Gives to knee camp. Who had a couple of first half threes. Had 12 points at the half. That and was now has filthy. 14. That was filthy. Uh, look, he's 6'8", and he does a crossover like that. That's filthy. He's a sophomore. 45-30. Every time Coldwater's gotten a chance to trim it to 10 or fewer, Kanapke to block. Cavaliers, or the Flyers, excuse me, have responded. They want to run. Mesher, transition three. No. Long rebound to Dewar. The, the, that, the, that blue and yellow side would have went nuts if he'd hit that shot. <laughs> I think... 
Kurt Guttemuller went nuts because he didn't hit right, it. And right. now Luke Pullman's going to the scorer's table. <laughs> it wasn't a very good shot <laughs> in, in, in transition, I should say. Timeout called by Nick Fisher with five and a half to go. We'll step aside as well. 15-point lead for the Flyers here on WOSN. Scoreboard tonight presented by Ultimate Outdoor, the Ohio distributor of the Structure Pergola X. Ultimate Outdoor, a division of Alts, seamless spouting. 45-30, the advantage from Marion Local on the Ultimate Outdoor scoreboard. Just over five and a half to go here in tonight's ball game. Flyers undefeated in the Midwest Athletic Conference. Coldwater at five and one. Blockberger setting up for three. But a foul committed. Yeah, Cody Depwig. When you saw what happened was Depwig was standing straight there at the top of the key, and he just moved to the side. And once you move and that guy comes through, they're going to call that every time. So the lead stays at 15. Unfortunate for the Cavaliers because Blockberger hit the three. But the foul happened before the shot. Hess across the timeline, right down Main Street off the oh, window. He's really good at that, Garrett. He's really good at that. He gets there so easy. 5-10 to go and a lead back out to 17. Marion Local in control the whole way tonight. Three on the way off the heel of the rim. Yeah, that, that's a good point, Garrett. Yeah, every time Coldwater's made, and not runs really, because they haven't got that close. They've made many runs where they got it down to 12 or 13, and we thought yeah, there was going a chance. a 5-0 run yeah, or a 4 right. nothing run. And, but the thing is, is Marion Local so good at responding to those runs, and Coach Gutmuller calls that timeout, and here we go, building that lead back up, and now we're at 17. Jack and Apke at six points. Flyers 14-3. and Kanapke scored in double digits in all but three of those contests. And he gets to seven there as a 65% free throw shooter. Garrett, this is a this is a big time game with two really good teams. Don't get me wrong, but tomorrow night, Marion Local and Spencerville. You want to yeah. talk about a showdown. You're talking about Marion Local will come in at 15 and 3, and Spencerville comes in at 16 and 1, and that place is going to be bananas. Yeah, there will be it's just as there are a lot of people here tonight, yeah, there will be a lot right. of people inside the hangar tomorrow. That's night. right. Nick, or excuse me, Knapp, you left that one short. Lead stays at 18. Including yours truly, so I'm excited about that game. Bounce back door pass to Marcel Blossom. Game's up and good. Hits his season average at six. Lead back down to 16. Ramley throws back. Ike gives to Pullman at the high left point. Four and a half to go. Flyers deliberate at this stage of the game. Ike in the short corner. Working around the perimeter, looking for a good shot. Holman works to his right, picks up the dribble, tightly guarded, tries to fire the backdoor pass to Ike, can't corral it. And another stop for the Cavaliers. I was going to say, if they scored right there, I thought maybe you'd see Coach Gottmuller try to get that clock down to the two-minute mark and unload, get those guys a little bit of rest, knowing they got a big game tomorrow night. But obviously you want to win this game with the conference on them, you know, not, not the conference title per se, but a, a chance to take sole possession of first place in the match. So exactly four minutes to go. Lossing game. Picked up the dribble. Reverses into the backcourt, and that's a backcourt that, violation. That is, yes, it is. Yes, it is. It, it went cold, off yep, Blade Busher. Yep, and exactly. Went off Blade Busher was the last one to touch it. Goes in the backcourt, and that's an over and back on the Cavaliers. He can't get the inbounds pass. Now Hess has it. Inside, Pullman contested three, blocked, got hit, and Luke Pullman will shoot three Wright State University late campus free throws. Third foul committed by Blade Butcher. That's the eighth by Coldwater. So Pullman, the six foot senior, has two points tonight, looking for three, four, and five. Got the first. 
he hits all three of these, it'll be the biggest lead they've had all night at 19. Whether you're interested in an associate's or bachelor's degree, Wright State University Lake Campus offers something for you. This is the second. Visit lake.wright.edu to apply today. So 17-point lead. Pullman hits two out of three. He's got four. Flyers got 13 points from the bench tonight. Four for Coldwater. And Sweeterman, Luke Sweeterman at the free throw line. As Evan Harlemert fouled. That'll be the sixth foul committed by the Flyers here in the half. Luke Pullman's fourth foul. So the lead stays at 18. Cavaliers trying to chip away. Three and a half to go. And Garrett, we haven't even talked about, you look at Marion Local this year in the third quarter, they've outscored their opponents 201 to 154, and in the fourth quarter, 228 to 175. So a lot of credit goes to Coach Gutmuller and the adjustments they make at halftime. And the other thing is they, they can go 9, 10 deep, and they just wear you down. That they can is the three from Luke Schwiegerman off the mark. Goes out of the rebound, comes out of bounds. So the Flyers, baseball pass on the inbounds to knee camp. <laughs> Hess right of the center circle. Works at the top of the key. Direct in traffic, double team. We got a foul committed by the Cavaliers and now Marion Local still shooting one on one. Foul committed by Blasi. You look at Marion Local and most of their starters are shooting. 70%, uh, 60%, you got a few under 50%, but you know, Austin meets them at 31%, but most of them shoot halfway decent, you know, from the line. So has a 76% free throw shooter. He makes both Wright State University Lake Campus free throws. Lead now 20 with three to go. Tate has with 10 points tonight. Cavaliers still fighting hard. Closing game in the high post. Harlemer puts it on the neck. Baseline. Foul committed by Hess. That'll be just his first time. You know, talk about good defense. Tate Hess guards the ball handler 85% of the time and with 2.45 to go, picks up his first foul. Yeah, he, he's really good. He can move his feet. He's not, you know, one, not one of those kids that slaps with his hands when the ball gets around him. He moves his feet. He gets in good position. He understands the assignment as a defender. And that's why he's a quarterback. He's a smart kid. He understands, you know, his assignment in every sport he plays. Looks like Luke Sweeterman might have a little blood on him. So Justin Kelp comes back in the game for Coldwater as Evan Harlemert steps to the Wright State University Lake Campus free throw line. He got the first. Eight points tonight for Harlemer, leading the Cavaliers. 6-2 senior guard steps back to the line. And he hit them both. So nine points for Harlemer. Nearly stole the inbounds pass, too. It was great timing. It was. <laughs> Took it right out of bounds with him. You see the effort still being played with by the Cavaliers. Haven't given up. Trailing by 18. Flyers trying to home run there on the inbounds. Have to settle for the single. Pass it behind right point. Works to the middle of the floor. In the lane. Nearly scooped it in. Tate Hess shoots two. Garrett, that's like five times tonight. We saw him beat his defender to the rim. He gets there so easy. You're either going to have to foul him or <laughs> pull him down because he's so quick. He moves as quick as the best, best of them. And Hess, the 76.7% free throw shooter, steps back to the Wright State University Lake Campus free throw line. Missed that one. Gave him the old announcer jinx. As Curtis Dewar comes back in. Well, Hess has had a nice game tonight. You know, he only averages seven points a game, and he's got ten tonight, but it's been on the defensive end where he's made his difference. Two and a half to go. Marion Local starting to sub in a 
couple of bench guys. Hess got that one to go as well. As Carter Jones, the 5'9 junior, comes in again. So a, a smattering of flyer starters and role players in a game. Yeah, they've taken Hess out and he's getting some nice applause from the uh, Marion local faithful there. He did a great job tonight. Dewar lobs back to Blockberger. He'll rise and fire for three off the front iron. Rebound pulled down by Neekamp. Long outlet pass to Randley in transition. Hits. I'm telling you, these Marion local guards really finish well at the rim. They're strong and they keep their head up on that rim. They do a great job. Mitchell Randley with 11 points off the bench tonight for the Flyers. Cavaliers. It is. Welsh goes to the window, got the hoop and the foul. And just as I say that, Mason Welsh does a great job of keeping his head up towards the rim. He does a great job of finishing. Now he gets to go to the line for the old-fashioned three. Ryan Holman and Kyle Ungren in the game for Coldwater for Marion Local, I beg your pardon. It's Welsh, six points off the bench. He ranks the University of Lake Campus free throw. Give him seven. Welsh got that one to go. So he converts the old-fashioned three-point play. You see. Cavaliers make some substitutions with two minutes to go. Ryan Holman across the timeline. The high left point, tightly guarded, stolen away to race the other way. And the layup's up and good for Curtis Dewar. He's got five. 1.45 to go. Now, if you're Marion Local, you just don't want to turn the ball over. You want to be able to hit free throws. And you walk out of here in first place in the map. Holman, top of the key. Gives to Kyle Otte. Right wing. Crosses over. Dribbled it off the top of his foot. Into the backcourt. And a travel violation call. We'll step aside, come back with the conclusion of tonight's ball game here on WOSN. Cold water basketball with 1.23 to go. Trying to get it in the backcourt into Brady Layfeld. He's able to scoop it up after stumbling. Cavaliers trail by 16 as Blockburger in the lane, got it and a foul. This is what I'd like to see the Coldwater guards do a little bit more of all night was getting to the rim, but obviously when you've got two post presses like Marion Logan does, that's what happens. So the foul committed by Ryan Holman. That's the first bucket of the evening for Balin Blockberger, a 5'11 sophomore, shooting the Wright State University of Lake Campus free throw after the foul, and got it. Cavaliers shoot 62% from the line as a team. Blockberger with three. And a foul committed by Coldwater's Curtis Dewar. His second. And Marion Local in the double bonus. Carter Jones will step to the line. Too strong on the first, a 5'9 junior. Seeing his first action tonight. Coldwater ESPN game day crew across the floor yeah. from us. Good to work with some professionals. That's, uh, that's <laughs> probably a nice change of pace for that's us. Right. That's right. Work with some people who know what they're doing around that's right. here. 13 point lead for the Flyers. Actually, you know, our, our crew, Kelsey and Mia, they're. They're the professionals around here. Say, we're, they, they get it done, don't they? We're just, we're just here. We're just two guys up here blabbing. Free throw made by Holman. Cavaliers get it down low. Shot off the mark. Adi the rebound. Brings it across the timeline. Double team. Cavaliers still playing tough defense. So Adi stands between the circles. Throws left. Now it's just a keep away game right now for the Flyers. Ungren holds. Gives to Carter Jones. Coldwater not relenting. As Adi. Near man a poke from behind by Blockberger. It's loose on the floor. 
We're going to jump ball. The possession arrow favors Cavaliers. So Marion Local is going to move to 15-3 on the season. 7-0 in the Midwest Athletic Conference. Cavaliers going to fall to 500 at 9-9. Right now, Marion Local is the class of the Mac right now. They, they're loaded. They've got it all, and they're showing you why tonight. Turnaround a shot by John Mullenkamp's good. He's got two. And a lean down to 12 with 10 seconds. Marion Local will dribble it out. And the Flyers remain undefeated in Midwest Athletic Conference play with a 56-44 victory. Got out to a 14-point lead in the first quarter. They were in control the entire night. Coldwater tried to climb back a couple of different times. Got it within 11 or 10. And every time they did, Marion Longo answered. And the Flyers remain undefeated in the Midwest Athletic Conference at 15-3 now. And 7-0, Coldwater drops to 9-9 nine and nine in Marion Longo. Now in the driver's seat for the Midwest Athletic Conference Championship. 56-44 win here tonight. A nice performance, a nice even performance, Marion Local scoring-wise, Danny. Yeah, look, when you look at, at great teams, and what do you say you want? I want good post presence. I want good senior guard. I want good defense and good coaching. They've got it all. They're the complete package. Look, I'm not saying they're going to win the state championship or anything like that, but they've got a great recipe for success. And when they play like they did tonight and they get a big lead, they're really going to be hard to beat. Austin Niekamp, 14 points tonight to lead Marion. And local, the 16 sophomore averages seven, so doubles up his season average and scores 14 in the victory. Evan Harlbert scores nine points for Coldwater in the loss. Mason Welch chipping in seven off the bench. The final score, the final time 56 44. Marion Local victorious tonight over the Coldwater Cavaliers for Mia and Kelsey and our fantastic WOSN crew. And Danny Holbrook, I'm Garrett Seelight saying so long. And we'll catch you next time right here on WOSN.